President-elect Joe Biden is back on the campaign trail in Georgia. He hosted a drive-in rally in Atlanta Tuesday for Democratic Senate candidates John Ossoff and Reverend Raphael Warnock. The high-stakes runoffs will determine which party controls the Senate during Mr. Biden's first term. His visit comes as early voting there gets into full swing. Georgia certainly wasn't going to stand by and let Donald Trump or the state of Texas or anyone else come in here and toss out your votes. But you know, you know who didn't stand by? You know who did nothing while Trump, Texas, and others were trying to wipe out every single one of the almost 5 million votes you had cast here in Georgia in November? Your two Republican senators, they stood by. In fact, your two Republican senators fully embraced what Texas was telling the Supreme Court. They fully embraced nullifying nearly 5 million Georgia votes. You might want to remember that come January 5th. Georgia's 16 Democratic electors officially cast their votes for Mr. Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris Monday. It cemented their win in the state, which President Trump has tried to contest. On Tuesday, Mr. Trump retweeted a lawyer threatening Georgia Republican officials. It claimed Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger and Governor Brian Kemp would, quote, soon be going to jail. For more, CBSN political reporter Caitlin Huey Burns is in Atlanta. Hi there, Caitlin. So what was the message from President-elect Joe Biden this afternoon? Well, by coming here to Atlanta, Joe Biden was campaigning for Warnock and Ossoff in those Senate runoffs, but he was actually really campaigning for the future of his own administration and his presidency and his agenda, because much of that agenda hinges on who controls the U.S. Senate. And these runoffs, of course, will determine that. If Democrats win both of these seats, that means they'll have a 50-50 split, and Kamala Harris as vice president would be that tie breaking vote. Republicans, however, just need to win one of those seats to win uh, the Senate majority. So this race, these races are really critical for Biden, and he knows that. And that was the message coming today from him. He said, I need two senators who can get something done, not two senators who will get in the way. Now, getting in the way is exactly what Kelly Loeffler and David Perdue are campaigning on, being uh, campaigning on this kind of being a check on Democratic Party power. Uh, so that's the message coming from Republicans, that they want to be the last line of defense against a Biden administration. Well, Democratic candidate John Ossoff addressed the pandemic during his speech this afternoon. Let's go ahead and listen to some of that. We've lost more than 300,000 Americans to this virus. A virus our Senator David Perdue told us was no deadlier than the common flu while he was buying up shares in manufacturers of vaccines and medical equipment. Our lives have been torn apart. We need to empower Georgia's Centers for Disease Control and doctors and scientists across this country to beat this virus, get our daily lives back, and save lives. And Georgia has the power to do that. So, Caitlin, how is the pandemic factoring into this race? Well, we've seen an uptick of cases here in Georgia like we have across the country. And also, of course, here in Atlanta, where we are, is home to the CDC. So that really places the pandemic kind of front and center. In this race today, we heard from Ossoff and Warnock talking about the pandemic. And they focused on not only the president's handling and the Republican senator's handling of coronavirus relief, uh, but also focused on economic relief as well. They urged Congress to pass legislation that included direct payments uh, for those uh, suffering from the economic fallout. You heard Ossoff there go directly at Purdue. Uh, there was a big report about uh, uh, stock trades that Purdue made uh, as a senator uh, that were the timing of which w was questionable. And that's a theme that we've heard uh, throughout the campaign here that Ossoff has been trying to say, which is that while uh, Purdue was making these stock trades, um, 
that that people were suffering uh, from the coronavirus pandemic. So he benefited it while people were suffering. So that's kind of a line that we've heard. But we've been hearing the candidates talk about pushing for economic relief, and we've heard Republicans talk about that as well. Well, spending, as you know, Caitlin, in these Georgia races is expected to reach over $466 million when it's all said and done. And Georgians have been inundated with attack ads. But are candidates actually saying much about what they stand for? That is a huge amount of money for these Senate races, over $400 million expected to be uh, on air here in Georgia. I can say that uh, watching TV, it's hard to go five minutes without seeing at least five campaign ads. So Georgia voters are pretty exhausted given that this is an extension of an already long and grueling campaign. There is a question of how much this eventually pays off. We've seen Senate candidates before in the general election in November raise lots lots and lots of money and weren't exactly successful. But the messages coming uh, from all sides here in Georgia are really focused on what this race means nationally. Yes, we've been hearing uh, the candidates talk about what matters to Georgia voters today. For example, Asaf and Warnock talked about uh, expanding health care access, especially in a pandemic, and giving economic relief. They also uh, talked a lot about John Lewis, of course, uh, uh, an Atlanta, a uh, longtime Atlanta Congress men and uh, they talked about the importance of passing the uh, John Lewis uh, Voting Rights Act uh, but mostly they've been focused on the national implications of this race the idea that this will determine whether a Biden agenda can get through Congress well Caitlin over a month after the presidential election Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell acknowledged Joe Biden's victory for the first time earlier today what about top Republicans there in Georgia? Well, that's going to be the question that we're watching over the next few days, is whether McConnell's words will move Kelly Loeffler and David Perdue to say the same thing, to basically acknowledge what has been reality for a while now and certified yesterday that Joe Biden is the president-elect. Interestingly enough, uh, Brian Kemp, the Republican governor here, gave an interview to the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, Journal and he said that, uh, that while he's frustrated with Republicans attacking him for certifying the results and not urging the legislature to uh, overturn those results, remember, Kemp has been the brunt of attacks uh, from the president himself, uh, he wouldn't go as far to say that Biden is the president elect. He said that there are still uh, legal, that, that he would let the legal process play out and make that determination later. So that kind of shows where the Republican Party is. And our CBS News polling this week showed that among Trump supporters, an overwhelming majority said that they believe that the election for Biden wasn't legitimate and they want Republicans to try to do everything they can to keep uh, Trump in power. And this is a base election here in Georgia. It's who can turn out the most voters uh, in their respective bases because runoffs are very different from general elections. So they need that turnout. And so it puts Republicans, they feel like they're in a tricky position with the uh, president uh, undermining the results. But at the same time, Republicans need voters to have faith in the system enough to turn out and vote for them in these runoffs. Yeah, certainly seems to be a fine line to walk there. All right, Caitlin Huey Burns on the campaign trail for us in Georgia. Thank you so much, Caitlin. Thank you. First Lady Melania Trump visited the Children's National Hospital Tuesday to spread some holiday cheer.